I do, actually. Um, look, we've just released our third quarter um, review, where we review all the data and economic indicators at our disposal. And I have to say, we're forecasting negative growth for 2009. If you look across the whole range of indicators, it's hard to come up with any positive growth this year uh, for the economy as a whole. Bear in mind, Namibia is still quite a, a, a diamond-dependent economy. Diamonds make up an important part of our economy, and they've been hit very hard. Likewise, the tourism sector has hit hard too. So I think we're talking about minus 2% growth for this year. But I think looking forward, I think we're seeing positive growth into 2010 and 2011. We've got quite a strong pipeline of new big investment projects in Namibia. They'll start to come on stream. And I think to some extent, diamonds will rebound a little bit. They've been very hard hit this year. And um, I think added to that, also uranium looks set to really steam ahead over the next few years. So I think positive growth next year and beyond, but this year minus 2%. Well, like you said, the diamond industry definitely takes over in Namibia and the global outlook for diamonds currently is rather grim. So where do you see the diamond industry in Namibia going forward? It is grim. Um, you know, we're in a rather unusual situation here in Namibia. We produce the world's highest quality gem diamonds, produce about 2 million carats over the last few years. That's mainly through NAMDEB, the joint venture between the Namibian government and, and uh, De Beers. Um, a lot of their operations were going to have to run down anyway. These are on-land operations which have been going for decades, and we were running out of reserves there. So the crisis has really just forced Namdeb to bring forward decisions it would have had to make anyway in 2010 and 2011. And you could argue that in a way it was a bit of a blessing in disguise for Namdeb. They've now shed a lot of costs, they've halved their workforce, and I think they're looking a lot meaner and uh, leaner and fitter in the years going forward. I don't think we're going to be producing 2 million plus carats a year from now on. I think we're looking much more at one to one and a half million carats a year, which is, after all, what Namibia was producing throughout most of the 90s and the early noughties. So um, it's sort of back to business as usual, I think, going forward. A lot depends on the U.S. consumer, of course, and we're hoping that the U.S. economy does start to, to rebound next year. Um, but I think a leaner, fitter Namdeb producing a lower quantity of diamonds going forward. What about wavering the royalty fees for diamonds? How does that affect the economy? Yeah, well, obviously it affects government revenue. Namdeb requested government that it, it would ra waive this royalty fee altogether. Government was penciling in about 125 million NAM dollars of revenue from the diamond royalties for this budget year. Um, governments allowed them to delay the payment of this royalty. Look, 125 million sounds a lot, but in the broad scheme of things, it's not that big an amount um, in terms of the government budget. We raise sort of uh, 20, 25 billion in revenue a year. So it's important, but it's, it's not critical. And I think government has made very conservative revenue forecasts for this year. I think it will be able to live without the diamond royalty, partly because it's it introduced a, a new royalty on the rest of the mining industry, which the rest of the industry is now paying. So I think it's bad news, but it's not a train smash by any means. Earlier you mentioned foreign investment coming into Namibia. Tula Oil is talking to Russia's Gazprom, another Russian company is interested in a drilling program for gas. India and Namibia have signed cooperations in mining and geology. What exactly will Namibia gain out of this? Yeah, good question. I think it's still very early days. You know, we've had a whole string of visitors um, through Namibia this year from all parts of the world. And government has generally been very open to investors from everywhere, China, India, you name it. I think traditionally Namibia has been very focused on the markets of Europe and possibly North America. I think that's starting to change. China is becoming a much more important trading partner, especially in the mineral sector. And I think we're starting to see genuine interest from those parts of the world in investing in Namibian um, facilities, for example, uranium mines and, and gas um, gas facility. So I think it's an interesting stage we're going through. I don't think any real deals of, of significance have been signed and sealed yet, but certainly um, the Indians, the Chinese, the Russians, they're all sniffing around our, our newfound uranium deposits and there are potentially some exciting things happening going forward. As I say, we have quite a strong project pipeline going forward. What I want to know is, is this the yeah, sure. rocket that's going okay. to launch Namibia's economy going forward? Yep. Well, I think we at Ned Capital are very bullish on the uranium market going forward. We've seen four or five new exploration companies come in and do quite dramatic uh, things in terms of new discoveries. One, especially the Rossing South discovery, clearly has a potential to be a world-class uranium 
um, mine. Um, and the costings have been done and we're looking at something quite big, bigger than the existing Rossing mine. Um, I think going forward Namibia could become an even more significant player in the uranium market. We're number four at the moment. I think we could go up to number three or number two, possibly even number one, depending on what happens in other countries. But we could look at a situation five years down the road where Namibia is producing a fifth of the world's uranium oxide, which makes us an important player in the market. And that will generate uh, spin-offs for the economy, GDP growth, employment growth, and all sorts of other things, uh, government revenue. Uh, so things are looking quite good from that point of view. Uranium has come in just at a time when diamonds seem to be um, running down to some extent, as I explained before. So it's come just in time to help us. Nonetheless, we'll continue to be a, an economy that's heavily dependent on the mining industry. Well, like South Africa, Namibia has also asked the central bank to reduce the margin between the repo rate and interest rates. And the res response has been rather lukewarm. What do you think the level should be at? I think if we go down the route where the central bank governor is telling the banks how to price their products, then I, I don't think that's the right route to be going down. I think there's clearly room for sort of discussion between the central bank and the commercial banks. There are other things I think the central bank could be doing to encourage levels of competition. And they've certainly encouraged other players to come into the market and compete with the four established banks. But I don't think we want to get into a position where the, where the governor of the central bank is really telling commercial banks how to price their book. Um, I, I hope the discussion will be positive and constructive going forward. There has been some movement already. Remember, our, our spread was 475 basis points, which is quite a bit higher than the spread in South Africa. I think the banks here would argue, well, their cost base is higher. They're, they're being asked to do all sorts of things which raise their cost, for example, by increasing access uh, to rural communities. Remember, this is a population of 2 million across a, a massive land area. That's expensive. They're being asked to localize systems. That's also expensive. So. I think it's a debate that, that needs to be uh, conducted, but it needs to be conducted on the basis of facts and analysis. And uh, I think it would be very unusual if we got to the stage in Namibia, which after all is pr pretty much a free market economy where the central bank governor is dictating terms to the commercial banks.